Well, I guess in terms of like red flags, like what, like, like in terms of bookkeeping, like what things should we be looking at with with red flags in bookkeeping? I guess whether it's we're working with somebody or whether it's, I guess, mistakes we're making in our own books. Like what things should we be looking at? Because it's not always devious, right? Like people make mistakes because they're trying to solve yeah. a problem sometimes. For sure. No, I when I see mistakes in books, I don't assume that someone's trying to be a bad person. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on your show, so. Oh, you can say whatever you want. As long as it's in the, oh, first, not in the if it's not in the first 90, 90 seconds, then YouTube doesn't care. Oh, great. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't assume that someone's trying to be, a, you know, an asshole and or steal money or do anything bad. But I just it's honestly really hard to find a good bookkeeper. I know because I hire them and mm -hmm. I go through a hundred application forms to find one or two good people. Um, so I am worried about the state of bookkeeping in America. I, you know, someday I'm going to have to, I, I already have plans in place to create a bookkeeping class for business owners. So just give mm -hmm. them very stable, like, here's what you need to do when they're not big enough yet, or when they're not ready to hire their own team. Or their, well, you I know, think output. also it's important too, from the perspective, and this is something I'm always telling business owners, like you don't have to do everything in your business, but you know, have to know how it all works. Right. Because if you yeah. don't know how it all works, then you can't be like, Ooh, look, what's that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so there's different sizes of companies and sometimes they're not big enough to hire an outside bookkeeper. And sometimes they're so big that they need an in-house team, but either way I can create, you know, basic videos and here's how you do this. Here's the basics. Here's what you do next. And that's, so I'm already planning on that, but yeah. it's almost like we need a bookkeeping school for bookkeepers too. Cause it's really trendy to be a bookkeeper right now. You get to work from home, you know, but it's so easy to like mess up someone's books. If you don't know what you're talking about or you don't have a mentor or someone that can review your books. So it's a very, it's a, it's a little bit scary for me, but I know most people are trying and they're, they're not, yeah. most people aren't bad people. They're not trying to, you know, do anything wrong. But I have heard of people getting into companies, books and stealing money and bezeling. So it's, it sucks. But I think as a business owner, what you would need to look for, you know, when you have a bookkeeper is different than the red flags you would look for if you're doing it yourself. But let's say mm. you have a bookkeeper. What are the red flags with your bookkeeper? Not getting communication from your bookkeeper. If you send them an email and you don't hear back from them for a couple of weeks or two or three weeks or a week, it's to me, that's just ridiculous. We're all in a computer age. We're all busy. Yes. But you know, our company policy is we get back to people with one within one business day, even if it's just to say, okay, we got your request. We put it in our ticket system. We're going to work on it. You know, we know it's not rushed, but we got you. We're going to do it. We, we have you a know. policy on that, too, because I feel like that's – like, even just your basic communication as a company, like, hey, I have received your communication. We're working on it. I'll get back to you. That's, like, really important because people kind of freak out if they don't have, like, an end to the communication. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's – I don't understand why in the financial field it's like, yeah, we'll get to you when, you, when we get to you. Because people, I don't know, people, maybe they're scared to fire their bookkeeper or something because the person has so much knowledge of their books. I don't know. But I don't think it's appropriate. And I think even when we're busy and we're super busy and we have to put on like an autoresponder, like give us an extra day, we still are like, we get back to people. And I, I literally hired a customer service rep just because mm. I wanted to make sure that communication got to people, that they knew that we had it under control because the bookkeepers weren't getting to people fast enough for my, for what I want. So, so that's one thing. And okay, fine. Maybe not everybody's as fast as we are, but mm -hmm. if they're taking over a week each time, like, come on, come on. That makes me worried. Like, what are you doing? Also, mm -hmm. another thing, if they're supposed to be doing monthly bookkeeping for you and you don't get a P&L statement from them, which is profit and loss, right? right? Then it's like, you don't know what they're doing. I, we send out the P&Ls every month. Well, we send out all, you know, all the financials every month. And even if the business owner doesn't look at it, at least they know we did it. Correct. Otherwise, let's say you're trying to get a new investor, you're trying to get a loan, you're trying to get a mortgage, and you're like, hey, I need a P&L, and the bookkeeper didn't get to your books and they haven't done them for the last four or five months. Now it's going to take them a minute. Yeah. 
and they have bad communication, so you don't even know. And you're like, I need it. And they're like, well, okay, well, I, I got to do it. And like, I thought I was paying you to do it every month. Well, I, yeah, I do every month, but I do it when I get to it. That's not what you, that's not what I would want as a business owner. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to be able to look at my books every week. And we right. have, we have quite a lot of business owners that we do their books every week. You know, we do a whole, um, we'll do their bookkeeping, then we'll do their, a financial plan with the payroll, the, you know, the set asides for reserves, taxes, their bills, they approve it. We pay everything, you know, so we have full service clients and then we, we make them look at it. Like here was what the money was, here's what's left, or here's the money. Here's how you're not going to pay all this. Like, what are you going to do? Are you going to do a cash infusion into your company? What's your plan? You know, we try to make sure that they have set asides and reserves so that that doesn't happen but you know that's how often i look at my books on a minimum but at yeah. least you should be getting a report every month from your bookkeeper if you're not if you're paying them to do every month i'm not saying if you're paying them to do it once a year and they don't give it to you like every month of course but if you're paying for every month they're not getting it every month that's a huge red flag they should be sending you a report just so you know that it got done um the other thing is Go and get some just basic training on a profit and loss. Don't you know? It's not even that you have to take a class. Just go look at it. It's pretty simple. It should make sense to you as a business owner because it's your books. Yeah. So, and you should be able to look at it, and you should be like, yeah, 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 that makes sense. So, if something doesn't make sense to you on your profit and loss, you have to go find out. Ask the bookkeeper mm -hmm. or go drill into it. Because and it would that, seem to me like if you got too far away from that thing, you notice it's off. It seems like it would be a lot harder to correct. Yes.